Hello, my name is Peter Owen and this tutorial is all about how to create your own standard API controller class in .NET Core. I've worked for a number of different companies where I've seen that controller code in particular tends to be duplicated a lot, not just in one project but across several projects. So a company might sort of um, adopt a reasonable standard in terms of how they want each controller to look. Um, but then they still duplicate that standard across um, from class to class, project to project. So I'm going to show you how to create a base class standard controller, which helps you to avoid that duplication and establishes some good standards as well. So I'm going to open up the class. OK, so um, as you can see, it's an abstract class. Um, and it inherits from controller base. That's the API controller class that you would normally inherit from if you were creating your own API controller. So instead of inheriting from this, you would inherit from this class standard controller. Now it's a generic class and so when you inherit from it, you've got to specify, nominate your requests and responses. So what are those referring to? Basically, they are referring to the, the structure of the web request that this controller um, handles and the structure of the web response that this controller um, gives back to the client. So they're, they're not actually defined. So basically, you, when you create, when you inherit from this class, you have to define what these are. You, you create your own web request and response. Okay, so there's also an extra little constraint um, that the, the response you create has to inherit from a class called base response. I'll just drill into this. So I've created an abstract class called base response and it's got an abstract int ID. So basically the idea I'm trying to convey here is that any, any, any kind of web response kind of needs to have a unique ID or, or it would be a good idea for it to have a unique ID. I'll explain why I've added this as I go back to my controller and, and talk you through it. OK, so here's the constructor. So when you construct it, you pass in a logger. That's the Microsoft logging interface. But you also pass in a reference to a service class. Now, this interface that I've created here, this is this is also generic. You having having chosen your Having defined your web request and response for your new controller class, you also need to write a service class um, based on the same two request and response types. Now, the idea of this service class is that it's to keep the controller as, as, as light as possible. It delegates all the work to it. So when, when the process post request comes into the controller, this this method here will be called on the service class process post request. And when the, um, a get request comes in to the controller, process get request will be called. So back in the standard controller class, I've added a sub URL called health check, which is always a very useful thing. So you could, you could when you're endpoints your controller API has gone live, you can use this sub URL health check as, um, as a way of checking that it's still up and running. So that's that's a, a nice to have. That's a pattern I've seen used um, in a lot of projects. Each controller has, has, a, has a separate HTTP get so you can make sure it's still up and running. OK, moving on. So here is the main get request for this controller. So I've standardized it by saying that you you have a resource ID coming in. So the, the overall URL would um, have appended to it an integer resource ID representing the specific resource you want to get. Now, after the logging has taken place, you'll see that the service class, which I mentioned earlier, all the work's being delegated to that. So you've got this call here, process get request, passing in the resource ID. So if the response that comes back is null, I'm returning the not found status code. Otherwise, I'm wrapping the response up in the OK function. So that means that 
the 200 OK status code will be called and the response body will be equal to the response that the service class has generated. OK, moving onwards to the post for this controller. So this is working with the request object. So after the logging has taken place, again, the service class is used to do the work and um, all the controller does is get the response and then returns that back to the client. So here I'm, I'm fitting in with a REST API as much as possible. I'm using this method created at action. That'll, that'll, make, that'll give the rec correct response code for um, a, created, a created response. Uh, but it also um, ensures this code here that the, the URL um, from where you can obtain this, this newly generated resource um, is, will be in the header. And that's, that's what this highlighted code does here. So if you, you were to grab that URL from the header, and then fire it into Postman or Explorer, it would end up getting the request, so it would end up calling this process get request up here. So there's quite a, so to summarize the standard control that I've created, um, it, it works with the idea that each each controller is is capable of creating new instances of a particular resource and is also capable of fetching any existing instance of, of that resource type. And, and, and fetching a resource, you need to identify it with a resource ID. So that's that's the sort of idea it's conveying, and it's also using the sort of principle that a, a separate service class is going to do most of the work. So I'll just go back to the service class and talk a little bit about how you would implement that. So creating resource, typically you'd implement this service class by um, yeah, creating a resource, you would take the request, probably transform it into a corresponding domain domain object, and then pass that domain object into a repository, which maybe talks to Entity Framework or whatever to create the resource in the database. And then it also, having created it, it returns the response object back to the client. Process get request, um, you pass in a resource ID, so that would, that would call a method on the repository, passing in the resource ID, it would get back the response and then just return it back to the controller. So that's 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 how you would write a service class. So I've talked through the, the sort of structure of this standard controller. So I can now show you an example controller that um, is built on this standard controller. So I've got a, a concrete class example controller inherits from standard controller. And in doing so, it has, because standard controller is generic and there's two generic parameters, it has to choose those parameters. So I've created two, an example request and an example response. Here's the example request. It's just got an integer and a string on it. And the example response has, it's got an ID and it's got a response string. So yeah, so for responses, I've, created a base response class um, and I've got that's got um, an ID an abstract integer ID on it the reason for that is that I want my if you go back to my standard controller I need to be able to it's um, reference the response ID in, in the when I'm providing the the URL of the resource going back to the client so here I in the line above, I've created the response object, um, which will have the ID in it, and but I need to pass that back to the client. So, and I always need to reference the ID. So, because this is generic, I've got the constraint on the response class that it inherits from base response, which is the one that has the ID on it. So that's the reason for that. But if you look at the example controller, that's really a very small amount of code. All you've got to do, I mean, you're always you're always going to have to create, whichever way you do it, you've got to create your own request and response objects for each URL, each each, each API um, request. Um, and you've, you're going to have to create your own um, service class as well, really, 
Um, as I've said, you could really genericize your service class as well. Um, but I've not taken this tutorial that far. Um, but hopefully this gives you a kind of a flavor of um, how to develop your own standard controller class. OK, I hope this has been useful and um, I'll be um, posting some more tutorials in the, um, the near future. Thanks.